Hello and good morning, Cisco Networking Academy instructors taking the Python Programmability Initiative course. In this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look again at the JSON library with Python. Now, remember, the JSON library is not built in. However, it's as simple as importing the library or importing the specific methods in that library with which we want to work. This video is going to focus on two of those methods. We're going to be taking a look at the dump method, which is where we have a Python object, and specifically that object would be a dictionary perhaps, and we're going to turn that into JSON data. And then we're going to take a look at the plural of that method, dumps, which is where we take a JSON data object, in other words, a Python dictionary, and we're going to convert that into a string so that it can be written to a file. Now, both of these methods, dump and dumps, are going to be working with files. However, remember that the plural, and the same is true with the load and loads method, the plural form of those, loads and dumps, is when we're working directly with files. All right, so an example here is going to be very valuable. So let's go ahead and pull up replet. Now, this is where some additional value is going to be seen with using replet. Because over here on the left-hand side, we can go ahead and create files or read from files. And all of those files would show up over here on our left-hand side. So this is going to be a very valuable exercise to perform in replet. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to import either the JSON library itself in Toto, or we can go ahead and be very specific. So what if I said from JSON, import dump, and then from JSON, import dumps. Now that's going to go ahead and bring in both the dump and the dumps methods. And we also are going to do a quick get request. So from requests, import get. And this is how we're gonna generate the JSON data with which we will be working. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down here response object, and we're gonna use that HTTP get method. Now, remember, because I specifically indicated the library from which I'm importing that method, I don't need to use this format. Had I simply said, import requests, then I would have to say that. However, since we've already report, uh, imported the specific method with which we want to work, all we have to do is the following. So we'll say api.open-notify.org astros JSON. Now, this is some pre-staged JSON information. In other words, we're simply going to get back an HTTP response object, and then we're going to go ahead and extract the JSON data that we're looking for. Now, we've worked with this Astros JSON data prior in the course, and here's what it looks like. If I was to refresh the screen here, you can see the date time stamp has changed. However, this is the data with which we're working. And it's simply a list of all the astronauts that are in space. And you can see currently we have 11. Now, if I click on the raw icon here, it's gonna give us this data in a raw format. In other words, not a nice, pretty format where we could take a look at it and scroll through. Now, when we use the JSON dump method, we're going to use the indentation option with that method to give us a similar format to the format that we see right here. And that's one of the beautiful things about the JSON dump method is that we can actually do a little bit of formatting as well when we send that data to the output file. So I'll go ahead and leave the data in this format here. Again, this is the JSON viewer Google Chrome or the Chrome browser plugin that is allowing me to type in the URL and to then manipulate the data and see it in the format that I feel is best for me. 
So let's go back to Replit where we have the response object. Now, something that I highly encourage is that whenever you're writing your program is that you do some spot checks. Let's see, do we get back an HTTP response of 200? So I'm gonna run my program here and there we go. So we know that it is generally successful. So I'll leave that print response in there so that we can see that. And then here we'll simply put an extra carriage return. Now, this is where I wanna get my JSON data. So I'm simply gonna say JSON data, and I'm going to assign it what we receive back. Oops, sorry, with the response object there. When I have the response object dot JSON. And so that JSON method when used with my HTTP response object is going to extract from that object the data in JSON format. And then again, this would be a great time to see, okay, is that going to achieve what I hope? And I'm sorry, I said print data, I want JSON data. Is that going to achieve what I hope it would achieve? In other words, are we going to see that same JSON data which is a Python dictionary. It's a JSON object because in the context of JSON, we would call it an object. In the context of JSON, we would say that this value for the key value pair of people and then the value that in the JSON context, that's not a list, that's an array, right? It's an array that has all of the astronauts. And in this array, the elements in the array are dictionaries, right? Or objects in the JSON context. Once we pull that data into Python, we're gonna be referring to it as dictionaries or lists. So we know that our program works up to this point. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the use case for JSON dumps. So let's say we've got this JSON data and I want to write that JSON data to a file. So one way that we could do that is using the with open, and I'm going to go ahead and put in here ISS Astros, and we're going to say dumps. I'm going to use the plural because you'll see that when I go ahead to create the uh, file that we'll be working with, with dump, that it's gonna be a little bit different. And I'll simply say ISS Astros dumps dot JSON. And we're gonna open this file as F. Now remember, F is simply a placeholder. In other words, I could have said files, I could have said my files, it's just simply, or my file, it's just simply a placeholder, something we're gonna be working with later, specifically right here. So I could throw a print statement in here that says, now writing uh, the ISS Astros data, whoops, to file. Now we'll go ahead and we'll throw another print statement in here to give us a, a carriage return, some separation. And this is where I would say f dot write. Now, here's the interesting thing. So I haven't used the JSON dumps method yet because I wanna show you what's going to happen if you don't have that. So let's say I thought, well, I could just go ahead and write that pure JSON data, that Python dictionary that we've received. I'm just gonna write that directly to the file because we know that that's the data. So I'm gonna use the write method with the file uh, descriptor that we have here, and I'm gonna write that data. Well, what we're gonna see is that we receive an error. And that error is telling us that when we're using that f.write, uh, that it needs to be, oops, sorry, and I actually left out, I apologize there, I received a message I did not anticipate. I left out the write mode with the file. And so here is the error that we are gonna to hope to see. And that is with the write method, the argument must be a string, not a dictionary. So when using this syntax and this approach to writing JSON data, and now it's a Python dictionary, to a file, if we're gonna use this approach with with open and then the f.write, it would need to be a string. And here's where JSON dumps comes into play. Now remember, again, 
I already uh, imported it as dumps. So all I would have to say from here is JSON string data. And this is where we're going to say dumps JSON data. So now, instead of writing the JSON data, I'm going to say write the JSON string data because that is what is required here with the argument. It must be a string. And so to get that string from the JSON data, we use JSON dumps. So let's check and see if that works. And again, before I run that, you might be wondering, well, wait a second, it created the ISS Astro dumps file and it's empty. If it aired out, how did that happen? Well, remember, we opened it up here for writing. And as soon as we do that, as soon as Python runs and interprets that line of code, the file ends up being created. Then we receive the error. That's why the file is here. And that's also why it's empty is because we did not provide a string argument to this write method. So now that we have everything in place that we need, we've used JSON dumps to convert the JSON data or the Python dictionary to a string. We can now write that data and that information to a file. So let's click run. And we see that everything works as expected. And now when we look at the ISS Astro's dumps file, you can see that we have our information here. So that is our use case or one of the use cases for JSON dumps. So now that we've had a chance to see how JSON dumps works, now let's take a look at the singular form of the method name. In other words, JSON dump. And let's take a look at a possible use case as to where this may come into play. Remember, when we're talking about the singular version of, of the method names, as in JSON dump or JSON load, remember, this is all about interacting with the files, right? With dumps, the plural, and loads, the plural, we're not so much working with files as we are sort of manipulating the data. And so let's take a look at what we might do here with JSON dump. So we're going to say JSON output file, and this is just our variable name that's going to hold the value that is returned when we take a look at loading, right, or uh, loading in the data that we're going to want here, and we're going to open this file up for writing. And so we're opening ISS Astros dump.json for writing. Now you'll notice up here we have ISS Astros dumps.json, and this is a file that we had worked on or created previously up here. So what we want to do is this is sort of the old school fashion of opening a file and then closing a file. So we've created this variable and that is referencing that ISS Astros dump.json file. It's been open for writing. And so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the dump method. And so what am I going to be dumping? Well, it's going to take a few arguments here. As you can see, we're receiving some help in terms of the syntax up here, but we're going to provide this with JSON data, right? So again, when we're using JSON dump, we're giving it a Python object, which is the dictionary. Now I said JSON data, that's the name of our variable here, but realize that in the context of Python, we're looking at it as a dictionary. So a Python, or I should say a JSON object is nothing more than a Python dictionary. When I say Python object, the object to which I'm referring is the Python dictionary. So that is JSON data, that variable from up here where we took out that JSON data from our HTTP response object right? So that is what we're going to dump. However, we've got a few more things we need to provide here. So we need to put in here the name of the file to which we are going to write this information. And again, that's that variable name that we created above JSON output file. That's think of it as like a placeholder here saying, Hey, I've got this file open for writing. 
Now tell me what you would like to write to it. And that is what the dump method is allowing us to do here. We're going to be writing the JSON data, which is a Python dictionary, and we're going to be turning it into JSON data, right? And this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be dumping JSON data into that file. Now, remember I had commented, we can actually make this look rather pretty as we saw on the Google Chrome page that we had uh, looked at with the JSON view. So that's the raw data and that's great. However, we can actually format it so that it looks rather nice like this in our file over here. And to do that, we would simply say indent. Now we can indent four, five, six, whatever the case may be. So we'll do four and let's, we'll take a look and see what it looks like. Now, remember we did not use with open as some variable name or some placeholder for the file. We actually kind of did the old school, hey, open this file up. So now we need to remember to close the JSON output file that we opened up on line number 19. All right, let's run this code and see what we've got. Hopefully no typos here. And everything looks good. And as you can see, we now have this new file, right? It was open for writing on line 19. And then we dumped what was a Python dictionary that was being held in the JSON or referenced by the JSON data variable name. We wrote it to that file and then we indented four spaces. And let's see what that looks like. And it's actually very, very cool. So when you take a look at that, this is the one of the use cases for JSON dump is you take a Python dictionary and you dump it into a file and you can do indentation to get a very nice representation of the Python dictionary as a JSON object. All right, well, that is going to do it for the two use cases we looked at here. We looked at JSON dumps, the plural version of the method name, and then we looked at JSON dump, the singular version of the method name. And we saw how these use cases work. If we need a string for whatever reason here in order to use the write method when we're opening up a file and trying to write some JSON data as a Python dictionary to a file, we would use JSON dumps. If we wanted to take some Python dictionary data or a Python dictionary and then dump it into a file as a JSON object, we would use JSON dump. Again, many other use cases exist. However, these are two that we've been talking about and that I wanted to make sure that I captured here so that you could see how these would work. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at JSON load and JSON loads. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Looking forward to seeing everybody on Thursday evening and hope that you're enjoying the course. Have a great rest of your weekend and see you soon.